Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be looking at probably the worst practice I've ever seen in terms of replacing a spindle's male panel mount connector. Um, I have a client that forwarded me this video. Uh, he was concerned about it. Uh, and again, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, aside from the obvious, many of you are going to look at this and probably be just as terrified as I am. But again, and I've stated this in previous videos many times, you've got to be careful on what you find online as far as what information is being used to guide you. Okay, I know that as uh, many influencers will post what they're doing with their robots, uh, you don't know their background. You don't know, again, if they understand truly what they are doing. And again, these motors are running three-phase. These are no joke. They will easily kill you. They will easily start fires. And what you're about to see here is, like I said, aside from the obvious, probably the most terrifying video I've ever seen in terms of modifying uh, a spindle connector as far as replacement. So there's not much sound in this. You'll notice I cut the channel off, so you're only being able to see the video itself. I'm doing that uh, to be discreet. However, if you search, you'll eventually find this video. And again, I don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, it's unfortunate YouTube doesn't really pay attention to things like this because it is terrifying. Uh, let's hit play and let's go over what we see here. Again, there's no real sound. He looks like he's probing the female connector. I'm going to just hit pause. And he writes here, the pin fry due to high resistance on the connector when working, there were sparks coming from the spindle. Now, depending upon where your robot is, let's just discuss the sparks thing, because I have heard of this happening numerous times. If you're working on, with your robot in a basement, in your garage, any room that has flammable uh, liquids, uh, a lot of flammable liquids like gasoline will ignite naturally if we have sparks present. Okay, that's that's the more extreme cases. Okay, but when sparks are present with a spindle, nine out of ten times there is some type of damage done to the spindle motor. Do we know the extent? No, we don't. Okay, but we know if we're seeing sparks, sparks are usually occurring because the end user is not paying attention to the robot in the truest sense of detail that's required to run a CNC robot. Now, that being said, accidents happen. We know that. It happens all the time. It's happened to me. It's happened to many people. Um, essentially, those accidents will become less prevalent the more you become experienced using your robot. And that's why I always encourage you guys to take notes. Needless to say, what he is going to be replacing here is this male panel mount connector. Now, of course, you can buy replacement male panel mount connectors, which in his case should have been purchased from whatever vendor. I do sell them, but whatever vendor he'd like, they should have been purchased so that he could have went in here and properly replaced this connector. The other area of concern I want to discuss, and I want to bring up a very logical point because I deal with this all the time, where potential clients and clients ask me about properly grounding their spindle. This individual took a ground lead, and I'm, he came right over here to the spindle body, which is stainless, tapped into the spindle body, which is dangerous in itself because it's the external part of the spindle motor. By doing so, not only did he actually void his warranty, which many of you laugh at anyways, uh, depending upon where you buy the spindle, if you bought it from me, you will void your warranty because I actually warranty my units in-house uh, directly. I don't believe in middlemen. You can ask uh, past clients of mine. I will actually warranty the unit in-house direct. I do the direct swap. There's no overseas shipment, none of that. Um, however, naturally, if that screw is too long, it could penetrate into the actual casing of the motor. We don't know how deep this is. But overall, I want to just disclose exactly how easy this is to ground your spindle. We see the remaining chassis of this unit that the spindle is mounted to is metal we see that it's non-anodized. And why I say non-anodized is anodization itself is a non-conductive coating. Okay, so any surface that's anodized but metal is non-conductive. Now we see his spindle mount here is black. We don't know if this is painted or what it may be, but if you do have an anodized coating on there, it's very simple to remove the anodized coating so you are in a conductive environment and we do once again see here all the metal frame on the z-axis 
is standardized steel or aluminum, whatever it may be, it is conductive. That being said, instead of dealing with tapping your spindle body, instead of dealing with removing the end cap of the spindle, which again, I've sent numerous pictures out uh, reflecting the end cap remove on the spindle so that you can solder on a lead from the fourth terminal to go to the end cap, you could easily just mount the spindle into a conductive area. Once again, the mount would be conductive if it did not have an anodized coating on it. And then, of course, mounting that uh, the mount onto an actual piece of steel or aluminum like we see here, which is bare. And you will have a grounded spindle, hence, if you ground your CNC chassis. Now, I highly recommend grounding the CNC chassis instead of grounding this, the spindle itself individually because you need to ground the chassis anyways. So why not kill two birds with one stone and not jeopardize the integrity of your spindle? When we see things like this or removing the end cap and you do not have the skill set to do so or you've never done it, why even bother? Why not look for the path of least resistance and keep it as simple and as safe as possible and just say, hey, well, the steel on the spindle is conductive. How can I test that? Well, if I have a multimeter, I can select it over to the continuity setting, check my probes to make sure that I have continuity, usually by a beep, and then just take the two probes and make contact with the spindle body. If you get a beep, you know that that surface is conductive. You can do that on any surface, including anodized surfaces, to test exactly what I'm saying, because who am I? Screw me. I'm just a guy online. But I'm telling you right now, one thing I know is doing something like this, number one, it's extra work. If you remove the end cap, that's extra work. You have to ground the actual chassis of your CNC router or robot anyways. Do that, ground it properly. And when I say properly, three ohms or under is considered grounded for robotics. How do we get to that low number of ohm rating? Well, all we have to do is add more contact points on our chassis. I, pr I always recommend doing a four-point grounding. That means on all four points of the chassis. You can also put one on your gantry as long as there's enough lead on the gantry, meaning there's enough length in whatever uh, ground uh, terminal you're using as far as the wire or if you're using tin brady copper which is optimal grounding uh, material um, you want to make sure it's long enough naturally to um, automate with the actual gantry so there's no pulling or tugging and everything is set but again the extra work will pay off not only in just safety for yourself of course but also in mitigating EMI so once again, I highly recommend against anything where you're drilling into the spindle body. God knows how deep this is. Uh, and of course, he is using crimp connectors. You know how I feel about crimp connectors. Solder everything. Uh, solder These crimp connectors, you have no idea if these are done making full continuity as they should. I have seen so many crimp connectors fail, and the resistance is much higher with crimp connectors. And it's funny, he brings up high resistance here, and yet he's crimping. So, uh, again, I don't know. But let's go into more detail with what we see going on here. Once again, I'll let you guys decide. Now, of course, as he's removing this end cap, just to clarify once again, if you're removing your end cap and your spindle does carry a justified warranty from a vendor who will actually fulfill it, and when I say that, if you're purchasing overseas, many of those warranties are non-existent. If you're purchasing in the U.S., most vendors will honor the warranty depending upon if it's been modified. If they can tell that the end cap has been removed, you've just voided your warranty. So proceed with caution. Now, I can't tell for certain what this is over here, this cloudiness, but it certainly looks like a burn mark to me. I'm not certain if that's what it was, but as we saw even back here slightly, let's see if we just come back a little bit. Just analyze this for a second. Right here. This all, unless it's all sealant material, I don't know about that. It looks a little bit crusty to me. And then as we look over here, he's right, this pin... It's totally been fried, and you can rest assured all of that 
uh, that actual dead short was probably going back into the motor itself. That's why I say to actually say that this spindle is fine and there's no damage would really have to be tested well for that. Now he's removing the actual connector from the cap. That's not such a big deal. Um, again, if you were going to do this correctly, you would just purchase the proper male panel mount connector that fit the cap and just desolder these actual leads and replace the connector. I've had many clients do it. I've done it numerous times. Um, this is the correct process in doing this. You can also, and I've had clients ask this question, can you replace the spindle's actual male panel mount connector with a different version male panel mount connector? Absolutely. As long as it fits the end cap properly, you're fine in doing that. And that's a good way to alleviate that H17 real small um, articulated uh, HY spindle connector, which is the most difficult to install. I've had so many clients do it, it's not even funny where they just immediately remove that panel mount connector so they could use, you know, either the large white HY ceramic connector and it's just much easier for them to install and just service the unit. Now, right there, just so we can, we'll be on the same page here, him using channel locks to pull out the actual connector. You can see he destroyed the connector, okay? I mean, logically speaking, I don't know what the point of that was other than the fact of the next step. And when you see this, once again, I think the fear will ensue. And just before we even get there, he is going to replace the round panel mount connector, which is an auto locking connector in that it actually has threads on it. Many of you guys know if you have your spindle, it has threads on it so that the collar from the female portion of the connector, once it's inserted, it screw locks on. It's an aviation type connector for safety. He is replacing this spindle connector with an IEC power plug which is used on the rear of most every enclosure to power the actual spindle, which is absolutely terrifying. You can see this right now. He's filing down the end cap so that he can insert an IEC power port. It's the same power port I use on my G540 enclosures. Uh, I've actually crossed over to using them on my pro enclosures. This is terrifying. Let's watch this whole process. Now he's proceeding with use silicone to seal the connector. This is to avoid debris or water from entering your spindle. Um, guys, please don't do this. Whatever you're doing uh, as far as if your spindle connector needs replacing, and I'm talking about the male panel mount, please purchase from a vendor the correct panel mount connector or a change up the connector completely using another panel mount connector. This is not best practice at all. This IEC power plug is fine to use uh, to power up general electronics. The issue is when you're using it on a spindle is, uh, number one, it can unplug at any time because there's no safety lock. That's what the GX16 type connectors as far as aviation, that's what they're known to have is that collet once again that threads on for safety. And again, with a spindle with three phase, safety is everything. This is treacherous, especially as we continue the video. I don't know what he's gluing with Loctite. Many of you already know that this spindle end cap is uh, a metal base. Usually it's aluminum. And if this is aluminum, I don't know how he's using a Loctite type uh, CA adhesive to actually adhere that. I, I would be, once again, this is just, it's getting worse as we go on. Okay, this is something I have to discuss because I've had clients cut their fingers many times doing that. And 
never, ever, ever use a razor and slowly go around to tr actually trim the casing off. Use yourself a nice set of flush cutters and you would just naturally rotate the flush cutters lightly around the casing and it'll just pop off. If he slips with that, you can rest assured some way, somehow, you're getting a depth of cut in your finger and hopefully not requiring stitches. I've seen it actually happen. You can see him doing it on every connector. Something else to discuss, uh, just for cross-referencing, any soldering on a three-phase cable, um, for insurance purposes, just to give you guys a heads up, must be done utilizing a double wall heat shrink in best practice. Also, when I'm talking about actually uh, soldering on the connectors and insulating the conductors to the connector, you want to make sure that adhesive is used. And why we want to use adhesive on heat shrink is so that the actual uh, heat shrink itself never moves. On top of it, also providing uh, an insulation layer for moisture so that there is no way moisture will ever penetrate that connector. He's using standard heat shrink here, guys. And again, like I said, it just keeps getting worse. And many of you already know what we're seeing here is completely incorrect when it comes to soldering. Okay, flux and solder go hand in hand. If you're not using flux, your solder is never going to bond the way it should. It's not designed to bond to itself. The rosin core that's inside the actual solder is best just to tin your actual tip of your iron. There is very minimal rosin inside of that actual solder to make it actually bond. And unless you're doing circuit board work where there's very, very minimal connections involved and any guy telling you most circuit board work always involves flux, I wouldn't even consider doing anything like what we're seeing now. I mean, this is just, like I said, it just keeps getting worse. Shrinking his heat shrink. Trying to redo his end cap seal. Okay, let me tell you a little secret. Um, first of all, if he's going to solder these, you never insert heat shrink over a conductor without the conductor being tin first. Why? Because you're going to bump these conductors and they'll go all over the place and you'll have frays everywhere. So always twine them first, fly your flux, tin them, and you'll slide your actual heat shrink over if you're using the proper heat shrink. In this case, he's not. And you'll find that it's much easier and, of course, you're not going to fray out your conductors. Once again, we see him piecing together. I, I'm just blown away here. He's piecing together the leads from the actual connector. And when I say the connector, this is the actual power cord. He's piecing it on. You'll see it as we go through here. Of course, he's not using flux. And what does he keep doing? Just keep heating the actual uh, lead until he feels he has enough actual solder on there instead of just applying enough flux and it would just naturally absorb in and wick itself through through capillary action and once again we can see here he took a power cord pieced the power cord end into his spindle cable we see shielding here that's exposed and I cannot emphasize enough how dangerous this is and I see this in a lot of videos where the shielding is exposed from the actual casing insulation guys if this ever makes contact in one way shape or form with any of those power leads you're in a dead short and again sparks are the least of your concern okay 
This is treacherous and should be corrected immediately. This is not best practice. If you do not know how to properly remove the uh, tin braided copper shield and terminate it, which in this case it looks like it's terminated somewhere in there, uh, he should have removed the excess and insulated this. Once again, double wall heat shrink uh, is optimal if he's not going to go all the way behind the casing. When I do it, I typically press all the way uh, between the casing and I can do that because I will go through and cut all of this level and you'll depress it inside the casing where it's not exposed and then you're okay using single wall because again the actual casing of the cable is doing its job this is an accident literally waiting to happen and what we're seeing here with this actual IEC power cord which is typically used on a computer or like I said general electronics this is absolutely terrifying Now, I understand, and I hear this a lot, you know, money may be tight. Money should not replace safety. And it's one thing, you know, you're using your robot to make money. I get that. But this is really, really scary. And it's something that, once again, I think there's only way to show this because, again, I have guys that are like, did that really happen? Now you guys see what I've seen. Here's another point. He's got a ground coming from the cable where it's attached to the shield ram with all this crap sticking out, which is all his tin braided copper. It comes in here to a lug and then it splits. You have a ground here and then a ground here. And what he doesn't realize is, is being these are all crimp connectors, the resistance just keeps growing. And it's funny, like I said, he really brought up high resistance in the video as far as him having to replace the or at least his analysis of why he had to replace the connector this is completely incorrect guys please be very careful with what you're doing and all I have to say is now the video is over please like I said be very careful I hope that a video like this really shows that you guys see what I see on a daily basis. This is the kind of stuff I see, and it scares the hell out of me. And that's just put it mildly because, again, you know, I don't know if this person has a family, if it's just him. I mean, naturally, he puts himself at risk. That's one thing, but we don't know if he has a family. You know, be very careful. These are three phase units. Even I get guys say, oh, it's a 110 volt spindle. It's not that big a deal. Um, I believe it is. I've had clients burn down their shop. Personally, I know that for a fact. Be very, very careful. Again, I hope that this video has been helpful. If you guys have questions, comments, quotes, whatever it may be, please message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. I don't know who this person is. I wish they would have messaged me first. Um, to be quite honest, I would have sent them a new connector just to know that it would have been done right, hopefully, pending, of course, he would have asked. But stuff like this, I always respect someone for asking first if they don't know before actually attempting something like this because this is once again just very very frightening and of course he thinks he's completed the job correctly because the unit turned on we have no idea how safe this unit is right now so again please be careful if you guys do uh, have questions you'll we'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end I look forward to hearing from you thank you all for your support take care